Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we are live from the library of the University of Ghent, the beautiful city of Ghent in Belgium. And we are the Belgian Portuguese Chamber of Commerce. My name is Rui Faria de Cunha, I'm the president. And I am very happy to welcome you all to this uh, special session of the program of the Gallery of the Portuguese Queens. Um, it's an organization of uh, the Chamber of Commerce, the Belgian Portuguese Chamber of Commerce, and of uh, Matriz Portuguesa. Both uh, João Miquel, the president of Matriz, and uh, myself as the president of the chamber, welcome you both here in presence and also online to this special uh, presentation of Isabella of Portugal, the Duchess of uh, Burgundy. It's a lecture from our uh, dear guest, uh, the Honorary Consul of Portugal in Ghent, Mr. Bruno Jos, that will be talking today about this special princess of uh, Portugal, Isabella, that has um, indeed traveled to this uh, north part of uh, Belgium to be uh, the, 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 the ruler together with the uh, husband, Philippe de Bon, Philippe de Goutte, um, of this region in the 15th century. So uh, without further ado, and also inviting you to come to Ghent and to the Library of the University to visit this uh, gallery of the Portuguese Queens that will be um, until the 29th of October, uh, from Monday to Friday, opening hours of the library. So please do drop by and see the, the exhibition. But uh, for now, I will pass the floor to Bruno Jost de Terbest, our dear uh, Honorary Consul of Portugal in Ghent. Bruno, the floor is yours, please. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, talking about Isabel of Portugal, uh, it is, of course, a very large number of, um, to tell, uh, but I will shorten as much as I can about the life of Isabel of Portugal. So, here we have the first slide. Uh, it is a painting of Isabel of Portugal made by Jan van Eyck, who was painter of the Burgundy, Burgundy court. Um, it was made, that painting was made in uh, 1429, because uh, Philip the Good wanted to know how she looked like. So he was sent to Portugal to paint the portrait of the Isabel in front of Portugal. Um, it was a very peculiar woman because she married when she was already 32 years old, which at the time is old. And she also lived a very long time because she died when she was 74 years old, which for the time being is very, very old. Now, but before we start to um, this, um, this presentation of uh, Isabella of Portugal, I, we would like to see our relationship with Portugal through the ages. Uh, first of all, we have in 1147, the liberation of Lisbon by, from the Moors in the second crusade by the Flemish crusaders. In 1184, Mathilde of Portugal married with Philip of Alsace, Count of Flanders. It was the start and the beginning of our relationship. Then in 1212, we have Fernando of Portugal married to Joana of Hino, Countess of Flanders. Fernando of Portugal was the son of Sancho I. Uh, Sancho I um, was the second king of Portugal. Uh, of course, Mathilde of Portugal arranged that marriage. Then we have in 1389, the commercial agreement 
between Flanders and Portugal, which was, of course, very important. And then we have in 1411, the opening of the Portuguese consulate for the Portuguese nation in Bruges. That was very important. Why? Because the Portuguese nation was recognized. They had uh, their own churches. They didn't pay less taxes. They have their own community, which is very important. And in commercial ways, the commercial inside and outside of the Portuguese people with the Flanders was very much easier. Of course, that consulate was not for papers or something. It was just for the commercial um, disagreement, eventually, or other things. Then we have in 1430, marriage of Isabel of Portugal, who married Philip de Boot. And then in 1451, Bruce resident leave for the Azores. In uh, 1501, the first Portuguese ship arrived in Antwerp. That is very important because it was the start of the Feitorias. And Antwerp was the center of the Feitorias in whole Europe, for the northern part of Europe. Um, in 1510, opening of the Portuguese consulate in Antwerp, because at the end of the 15th century, the Portuguese went away and went to Antwerp for different reasons. In 1526, Emperor Charles V married Isabel of Portugal, the daughter of Manuel I. Then we have in 1580 until 1640, we had the chance or the opportunity to have the same kings. Not so happy for the Portuguese, because they were very uncomfortable to have a Portuguese a Spanish king. But for us, it was very good and the commercial ways went uh, very well. Then in 1834, King Leopold I sent 3,000 soldiers to Portugal to save the crown of Portugal of Marie de, Maria Lois. Then from 1850 to 1860 and more, we have the Belgians who invest in Portuguese railway, mines, and so on. Then in 18, 1918, the Portuguese in the World War I. And then something that very little uh, Portuguese know, we had the help of the Red Cross the Portuguese Red Cross offers uh, their help to uh, help the people of Brussels. And of course, in uh, 2018, we had the state visit of our mother to Portugal. So, um, John I of Portugal and Philip of Lancaster, these are the parents of Isabel of Portugal. It is the first uh, king of the Avis dynasty. Before the Avis dynasty, you have the Burgundy dynasty. Uh, let's say that the Burgundy dynasty made and made Portugal as a child, as a country. The Avis dynasty, that is the dynasty of the discoveries, or the start of the discoveries. And uh, one of the children of a couple was Henry the Navigator, who started, and we will see that later, who started the, the navigation. Uh, it was um, 
a little bit in confusion because uh, between 1383 and 1385, there was a crisis, a big crisis in Portugal because the people of Portugal didn't recognize John uh, of Avis as king of Portugal. And uh, because um, John I of Castile was married with uh, Portuguese and he wanted to have the crown of Portugal. So what is happening in 1385, we have the Battle of Alju Barotta, a fantastic battle because the Portuguese were with the English and the Spanish, the other side were with the French. But at that battle, the Portuguese and the English were uh, 6,500. And the other side were 32,000. It was a very big difference. And it was a, a, a battle won by the Portuguese. And in, uh, 18, in 1385, the Portuguese made an agreement with the English that is the famous Treaty of Windsor, which is very important. It was a diplomatic treaty which put um, Portugal uh, <coughs> away from the French and the Spanish. And uh, the house of Avis, uh, Avis, uh, they had different children, which are known as the illustrious generation. We will see that a little bit. So here you have a little small um, genealogical uh, tree, uh, and you can see that Isabel of Portugal, her, her grandfather by the mother's side is a Flemish, Jan of Ghent. And uh, the mother of uh, Jan of Ghent is Philippa von of Henehau, is a Flemish. So, um, and here you have on the side, the hundred, you have Pedro of Portugal, which was a great diplomatic and voyage through Europe. You have Henry the Navigator, which is an important, and of course, Isabella of Portugal. And here you have uh, Philip III, Duke of Burgundy, also called the Good. I don't know why the good, because I, I think he was only good to the woman. And um, the problem is that uh, he, uh, he declared to his wife that he would be unfaithful. That is not very nice. Uh, I was thinking to tell that to my wife, but I thought that was a very bad idea. So, we are, the Flemish are, of course, trading with uh, Portugal. The first Portuguese arrived here in 1235, more or less. And uh, the Portuguese are buying textile fabrics from Wevik, Kortek, and Kent weapons, tapestry, paintings, and jewelry. And what uh, we, what did we Flemish bought in Portugal? Olive and olive oil, wine, fruit, lemon, sugar, orange. Orange only about 1500 because orange is a Chinese product. They didn't have orange in Europe at that time. But it is the Portuguese who brought the orange into Europe. As tea also, and many more other products. And African wood. The first Flemish established in 1420 in Lisbon. About a hundred Flemish 
established there. And the Flemish was, were already in Madeira too. I will, we will see that later. So we have our map, the big marriage, January the 7th, 1430. We have the marriage of Philip the Good and Isabella of Portugal. Uh, it was, um, as Isabella was a very intelligent woman and uh, she was diplomat, she was intelligent, cultivated, she wanted to expand also the territory of Philip the Good. Um, on the 16th of January, we have the visit of Isabella de Portugal in Ghent. She came in Ghent. Then we have the Peace Conference of Arras in 1435. We are now about at the end of the Hundred Years' War, the religious war between the Burgundy, French and the English. The English wanted to have a part of the south of France, which is the Aquitaine. And um, the, the French were furious to Burgundy because the Duke of Burgundy delivered Joan of Arc to the English. They were not very happy with that. And um, the Burgundy were very angry to the French because they assassinated the father of Philip uh, Pigou, John uh, the Fairless. Uh, John the First the Fairless, Duke of Burgundy. <coughs> so we're going to put everybody around the table. It was at the time in 1435, a very big conference. It was a conference, as we should call it now, a Europe top. We had uh, the King of Germany, we had the King of Spain, we had uh, the representatives, the bishops of England, we had the King uh, of Portugal, so everybody, all what was high in Europe was there. But when the English arrived at the conference, they were already asking to Isabel of Portugal, because Isabel of Portugal had English roots. And Philip the Good asked Isabella to treat with the English because the mother of Isabel is English. And uh, Philip the Good took the French to negotiate. And uh, the first thing that the English uh, ask is to have Aquitaine back. And the French said, that is not possible. And after a few hours, the English stand up and went away. You see, the Brexit already started. Uh, the peace conference was settled between the French and the Burgundy, and it was the end of the peace conference who went well and finished very well. Here you have the house of Juan Vasquez. This is the house of the secretary of uh, Isabel of Portugal. It was built in 1468 and it's still, and it's still there. Uh, it's a nice restaurant. Uh, we went to it, I think, yes. It is a nice restaurant. And the motto is Bon Compte Avenir. It will say all the spirit of Portugal's 
and the Portuguese people. So that is one of the most beautiful house in Bruges, of course, because it's Portuguese. If it's so but it's, uh, it's magic to have that still. So here we have the properties of Philippe de Wood, Duke of Burgundy. You can see it's very big, very vast, very well. Okay. We must know that uh, Philippe of Burgundy, one week after his marriage, he created the Order of the Golden Fleece. Why did he do that? Well, as he has a very vast country, he had to put um, more or less uh, members of that order in different parts of the region to control his region. Because if he is in Dijon, he cannot see what is happening in north of, uh, of Netherlands. So he created um, uh, that order. It's a very uh, important order. Uh, and all the people who are um, his closest advisors are all members of that order of the Golden Fleece. Um, you have uh, here on that map a big deal of uh, the Netherlands, you have the north of France, you have Luxembourg, and you have a deal of France, uh, but uh, the side of uh, Dijon and so on. That is the whole thing. What, what happened with Isabel of Portugal, all what is northern uh, Netherlands, she was the negotiator to have these lands. She did a lot of diplomacy. Um, they, the relation between uh, Philippe de Gourde and Isabel of Portugal was um, they were good coordinated uh, for diplomacy and politics. Uh, they, they agreed fully. For the rest, no. That, that, that's so. Not only politics and diplomacy for Isabel of Portugal was important, but also the art. And not only the art, also the music, polyphony, eh, that she exported to Portugal, uh, and also the art. You have here Quinton Metzis, who is a painter of the court of Burgundy, and you have Georges Alfonso who did the same thing, approximately. So, um, Isabel of Portugal exported the art to, uh, to Portugal uh, to, to have a relation, not only in commercial relation, but also art, poets, and polyphony, and so on, and so on. Here you have the, let's say the castle in Ghent of, uh, it's called the Prinzenhof in Ghent, resident of the Duke and the Duchess of Burgundy in Ghent. In Ghent. And you have also the coat of arms of Isabella of Portugal in the city hall in Ghent. It's called the Pacification Hall. Then we have here Henry the Navigator. Well, after the Battle of La Guta, Weta, it's near the Dalpa, somewhere there. Uh, uh, John I of Portugal gave the title to his sons. Henry was Duke of Vise, and Pedro Peter was Duke of Quimba. Um, of course, Henry the Navigator did the navigate. He was, let's say that he was the man who stimulated the navigation. Because we don't have to forget, he also um, created a school of navigation in Sagash, in the south of Portugal. Not only to learn navigate, 
but also to learn the languages, the dialects, because uh, the explorers had to speak also the native languages in, in Africa. So it is actually the beginning uh, of uh, the discoveries for the, the, the Portuguese. And of course, they navigate a little bit nearby Portugal, the, the, the tribe. Uh, we, we, we don't have the Treaty of Tordesillas yet, but, but that one is coming. Hmm? So Madeira, La Queta, La Blanc, Guinea-Bissau, Cap Verde, and the Azores. He was uh, um, a good advisor. He came uh, two or three times in group so, uh, to visit his sister. And then you have, of course, the discovery travels of the Portuguese, but that is a little bit later because you have Vasco de Gama, it's at the end of the 15th century. Then we have the uh, uh, Flemish islands. Well, a little explanation. Um, we don't know very much why those 300 Flemish decided to go to the Azores, but we think that one of the navigators by a storm landed in the Azores and found that a fantastic island. And uh, he asked Isabel of Portugal to colonize that island. And that is in 1451. 300 families of Bruges went to the Azores. Um, but it, there were conditions. Uh, Henry, the navigator, agreed, but there were conditions. They had to um, deforest the island. And the second thing, they had also to uh, wheat, to put wheat uh, on the island. Because uh, Henry, the navigator, wanted to have a reserve of wheat for Portugal. At that time, we had uh, many sickness, uh, pests, uh, and so on. So he wanted to have a reserve of food for the Portuguese. That is the footprints of the Flemish in the Azores. You have, of course, the Queijo Flamingo that is very well known. Uh, then the Flemish people changed their name. Van der Haar become Da Silveira. You have some uh, avenues, Ricardo P. Maas, that's very typically Flemish Maas. And you have Rua Pedro Castellet, that is, of course, a Flemish name. And you have also, of course, Portuguese girls and boys who have blue eyes. And that is from uh, Flemish roots. And you have also Dutre, which is a Dutra. Okay, so that is the, one of the parts. There are others. And the windmills, the windmills who are typically Flemish and not Portuguese, these are Flemish windmills who still are there. And you have the one under Onze Lieve Vrouw Lombeek, Roosdal, that is in Azores with the Flemish name. Fantastic. Uh, Isabel of Portugal. Um, at about 1457, she uh, became a little bit tired of the court of Burgundy. And she took a little bit her, uh, her pension, it's not the word, but she retired a little bit in the La Motte au Bois, Chateau La Motte au Bois, in northern France. 
and she was more advisor to her son, Charles the Bold. Isabel of Portugal had three thrones. The two first were died young, and they survived only one, Charles the Bold, in French, Charles de Mer. Uh, she was tired of her husband, too, and his politics. And uh, that is another painter of the Bergen's, uh, Bergen report, uh, Roger van der Rey, a very famous painter. Then we have a little awkward and mysterious <laughs> um, Portuguese uh, story. Uh, we have here Beatrice of Quinta. She is the daughter of Pedro. So Beatrice is the niece of Isabel of Portugal. She, uh, after the battle of um, uh, Alfa Robera in 1449, uh, where Pedro died, at that battle, he was regent of Portugal because his nephew was not old enough to be king. So that had that happened. But Pedro of Portugal made some bad choices. So what is happening? All the children and the, the, the spouse of Pedro of Portugal went away from Portugal and went to their aunt, Isabel. Beatrice was the niece of Isabel of Portugal. And Adolf van Kleef was the nephew of Philip de Good. So it was a family marriage. They married in 1453 in Ghent. Here. Um, but the main thing about that story is that she died in prison. She was accused of poison, but we do not know who she poisoned and why she poisoned. And we don't speak about um, a court, nothing. Just she died in prison in 1462. She was arrested, put in prison, and died there. Punto a No process, no nothing. We have no information about that. So that is something I want to look for. Then we have Madeira. We spoke about the Azores, so the other island, Madeira. The Flemish were there very, very, very early. In 1436, arrived the first Flemish. In the 15th century, there were the Baron of Sugarcane, the most important, and they exported the sugar to brew. Here we have the document of the shipment of sugarcane from Madeira to Bruges, a document dated from 1400. And 97. The first Flemish arrived in Madeira in 1436 and stayed until 1530. They were the Shukum barons at the time. And the last um, slide is Manuel Arriega Brum de Silveira, the first president of the New Republic in Portugal in 1911. He is a descendant of William van der Bruyne, who first lived in Madeira in 1436 and then left for the Astronauts. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bruno. It has been a pleasure, as always, to listen to your interesting story about Isabella of Portugal. I know that you have many more stories to tell, so we wish that you come back to the Chamber of Commerce to tell us more about 
the relationship between Flanders and Portugal. Thank you, Bruno. Thank you all for coming. Thank you all for being there online. So next week, this uh, Friday next week, so the 22nd of uh, October, we'll have a new uh, historical conference by Professor Georges Martin on the Portuguese Feitoria of uh, Antwerp. So please join us at three o'clock CT uh, next uh, Friday, the 22nd of October. And do come to uh, Ghent and to the beautiful library of the University of Ghent to visit the exhibition gallery of the Portuguese Queens. I have also to thank uh, our host, uh, the University of uh, Ghent and its uh, library. I also have to thank our partner, Matriz Portuguesa and this president, João Miquel, the Portuguese government, Ministry of Culture and the Instituto Camões for the support of this initiative. Thank you, have a good afternoon.